out, this is normal. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you stop there. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is our last day in Kauai. It's my last training session with Dooney. And I'm hoping uh, Kathleen is going to feel comfortable enough to get on him today. And my two big goals for her are on him are, number one, that she feels more comfortable than she did previously. And number two, that she feels confident in her understanding of the um, exercises that I'm giving her and Dooney to keep going with um, after we leave here. Let's get into it. So one of the exercises that we taught him is what I call relax rain. But the little kind of key element here is the partial disengagement in his hindquarters. And then I give him slack in the rain and I ask him to hold it there. So he knows this now. So if he were to get bothered after I cantered him or trotted him or something, I would have a better chance of recovering. But also, if you were trail riding him and a branch fell and he got spooked, he would act like he didn't never heard of that game. But as you start to work that game a little bit, he'll go, oh yeah, I remember this because it's familiar to him. And so that's one of the, the ideas of being prepared and not lucky. Ah, oh, and hear that. And see how every day that's come quicker and quicker. And yesterday that happened at the very end of the ride. The first two days it happened kind of in the middle. And then today it's right away in the beginning. Again, which are all the things that are telling us he's understanding, turning loose, he's getting comfortable. And that's, that was our goal. That was my number one goal. Because I could see that first day when you got on him, he, he was not comfortable. And I was like, oh, we don't need to continue. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to continue. So that's music to my ears when I hear that, because that means he's turning loose through his ribs. And the fact that he's doing that with us getting on him is a really good, that was kind of our goal throughout the week was that we would warm him up strong so that we could get on and ride soft and we did harder things on the ground than what we did on his back so that he would have a positive experience. And this is also the longest and best he's walked around in terms of he feels easier to ride like he's traveling out more forward and, and around versus turning right away and having like, I don't know where to go. Um, and then where his head's at and it's just dropped and I, my legs are touching him and he's not trotting. <laughs> you know, it's just a different, different horse here. And so we're going to soak this up. I don't need to rush. I'd like to be trotting right now. I'd like to be cantering. Um, but it, I don't need to do anything to knock him out of this frame of mind when he's in the frame of mind I've been working at all, all week. Does that make sense, Kathleen? It's like if he's in a good frame of mind and you felt like you worked hard that day to get him there or those days before that, just, just let, it, let him soak on that. Don't, don't get in a hurry to trot or canter or do something hard. It's like he's where we want him to be like because again human instinct says well more repetitions of what you're you know relaxed rain or hind yells that would equal better not if he's in the right frame of mind i i do not like to use repetition to teach you shouldn't have to horses learn very quickly if we give them if we present it to them in the right way and we give them the opportunity to what i use repetition to do is to kind of test and I kind of check them out. I go, okay, is this still there? Is this still working? This is so much better. See, there's that turn. I didn't ask him to turn. So I'll pick him up and turn him the other way. Then we'll bring him back into the trot. Yesterday at the end of the ride, he gave me like almost one complete circle of this trot he's giving me right now without doing that. But today he did it like straight away. And like yesterday was really hard because he was, he made every mistake at one second after the other. He would go faster, go slower, turn, like just everything. Today it's like he made two mistakes he turned sharp on me once when i didn't ask and then he broke gate there like it's so like this is really manageable i think for kathleen where yesterday you kind of had to know exactly what you were doing to be ready to like you had to have more moves than a can of x-lax <laughs> you 
yesterday because you just had to be ready. He, would hit, he was keeping you on your toes. Where today, this feels much easier. But I'm really happy he decided to have a good day while I was here. <laughs> Doesn't always shape up the way you're hoping for. This is so much better. Hey, if you guys are enjoying this video and you would like to see more uh, detailed training videos and be able to ask me specific questions about your horse, consider joining my Patreon page. It's only $10 a month. You're gonna have access to all the videos. We do a fun monthly challenge that has a giveaway for the winner um, at the end. And I think you guys will really enjoy it. So we'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. So one of the things that I'm suggesting that Kathleen works on with him, and I did this a little bit this week, he pretty easily thinks legs mean go, if you just squeeze him with your legs slightly. And so what I would do is get a little contact and squeeze and ask him to shape up. And then when I wanna stop, I'm gonna take sit and I'm gonna take my legs off. Yeah, until he backs up. So, so pressure went away when we stopped. And that gets a horse sweeter on stopping. And any horse is gonna be safer if they have a better stop. So it's just kind of not, not a bad addition to put into the repertoire here. Now the question I have today is, I really wanna lope him around. <laughs> um, but yesterday when I loped him, he was more ready to trot you know, afterwards. Um, so I, I'm going to leave it to Kathleen. Do you want to ride him now the way he is, or would you like me to lope him around a bit first? All right. Yeah. The other thing I want to do is I want to ride him with contact a little bit just to make sure I'm not missing anything uh, with that. Well, even if you just stay at a walk with that at first, he had enough trouble there that there's plenty of room to improve just at a walk. And then as you feel more comfortable and trust him more, um, then you can start like taking, you can say, okay, I'm gonna give him two or three steps to trot and then I'm gonna bend him down. And you just build, build on that. But as long as I don't run into a serious issue here with contact, there's no reason you can't ride him with contact either. It's just that you have to understand that all week I've been loosening his spring, right? And that's when we saw the kind of best picture of that today. Um, Riding him with contact does not, even if it's a great ride, a beautiful ride, it does not have that same effect. It potentially could have the opposite effect where it tightens his spring more. And so, you know, maybe just starting and ending your ride on a loose rein at a walk, bending him, hind quarter yields is enough to balance it. You'll just have to experiment with it and see. So I'm just gonna canter him a little bit both ways. Just check that out. I like how light that transition is. You see there, I just breathed out and sat and he just came right back. That's my favorite consequence of doing relaxed rain enough <laughs> or doing the hind quarter yield enough. Because every time I did that, before I bent him around, I sat and I relaxed. And they, they connect that. 
And really, I, I think that's how most people should ride or are riding, but they don't always have the opportunity to connect it. If you, if you just stop them and they don't get relaxed. But if you bend them down and they get soft, then they wanna, they wanna slow down and stop. Like all I have to do is slide my leg back slightly and he thinks he's ready to canter. Seriously though, if we were in the US, I would totally be trying to buy this horse off you. <laughs> Cause he's like my favorite like personality. He's sensitive, but he's more woe than go. Even though he's going when we don't want, I think that's more of a learned behavior. He doesn't want to do that. He just has some, some baggage, you know, but he wants to be a good boy. Okay, so Kathleen, at a walk, you're gonna do, we're gonna practice three maneuvers. Maneuver number one is you're walking. You can have both hands on the reins. And so what, I'm gonna try to walk straight across the arena and I'm gonna let him turn whenever he decides to turn. <laughs> okay? So now I go neck rein, direct rein. Strong enough that he slows down and that he feels like he ran into a little bit of pressure. So this is the, one of the first things to work on in terms of his steering. No, a, a goal should be that if you put your reins down and you look up, your horse travels straight. No horse naturally does this. Every horse weaves and turns. So to whatever degree you have a horse that rides straight, it's because somebody taught them to ride straight. Now, you know, riding straight back to the barn or something is one thing, but riding, you know, across the arena or something. The hardest place here would probably be to ride straight to that far end, right? It might not be hard to start there and ride straight there, um, but that's one, the first thing, okay, steering. And it's gonna be neck rein, direct rein, that's the move. But it's gotta be with a little bit of a firm feel so that he puts weight on his haunches as he turns. So, th so this would not be it. Let's say I gotta turn right. That's not it. It's, it's what we call a square turn. You're gonna keep his shoulders up. So that's part one. The two and three are the hind quarter yield and relax rein. So the hind quarter yield, we're gonna practice it, and you would apply that technique if you felt like you lost him mentally, like, like a lot, like he went, what's that over there? You know, and just got this like, high you know uh, gaze on something or if he spooked or flinched or did something you didn't want if he whinnied out to the other horses you would do a hind cordial any of those things would indicate he's not with you anymore that's going to be a hind cordial or if he breaks gate if he just you because you feel like it or you feel like he got a little bracy a little like it was slightly uncomfortable then you could just go ahead and do relax rain if you just kind of wanted to check it out so I also don't want him to see relax rain as pressure. I want him to see relax rain as relief. This is comfortable. Like, okay, let's get settled. Let's get comfortable. When I do the hind quarter yield, I'd rather him say, I'd rather you not do that again. <laughs> like I'm going to pull on it, the rain a little bit. I'm going to use my leg a little bit. I want that to feel a little bit like pressure from whatever you just did. We don't want to do that anymore. So it's kind of like my version of saying, no, don't do that. Um, and the, the interesting part about it is they do those bad behaviors less as we're seeing. And the secondary effect is when you do it, and if you're consistent with it and you don't reinvent a new way to say no every single time they do something bad, like some people will, they'll jerk them, they'll tap them with something, you know. And it's like if you have five different ways to say no, they're not gonna be sure that it was no. Like if you're training a dog and you just say no and it's clear, whatever you were doing, we're not doing that. <laughs> you know, we're not chasing the mailman, we're not chewing on the shoe, we're not potting in the house, it's just no. And that makes it simple for them to go, okay, whatever I just did, I shouldn't, shouldn't have done that. Um, and it, it's also easy because you don't have to think about it. It's like, oh, just bend him hind quarter yield. Um, you, don't, you don't have to get real creative. You can also do it in a very small space. You know, if you're on a trail ride with a horse or something and you don't have a ton of room, you don't have to have like, oh, we're gonna lope 20 circles both ways now. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's in and done. And when you do it on a horse that knows it, they, their mind comes back to you like almost instantly. It's really remarkable how quickly they connect back to you and forget about whatever it was that they were bothered by. So now that I've ridden the horse and I felt uh, how good he is, 
Um, I'm really uh, have high expectations for how this is going to go with her because this is a really critical point. I need her to feel comfortable on that horse. I need her to not be guarded and defensive. Um, knowing the past history, it's, it's hard to uh, have a short-term memory and, and for, it's, it's hard to be present with the horse in that moment instead of thinking about what's happened in the past. And so there's a lot of stakes riding on how this part goes. And then just pet him. Now my first question to you is how, does, how do you feel on him today? Fine right now, but I'm sitting still. Does it feel better, different than previous times? Um, well, the, when he braces when I get on, because he never used to do that. That's kind of a new thing he started doing, so that makes me feel a little guarded at first, as opposed to him just being relaxed when I get on. Yeah, he, he is bracing there, but I would also say he is relaxed. Okay. Because he just licked and chewed, his muscles are pretty soft, his tail's soft, his eyes are soft. Like, when you put the whole picture together, it is pretty soft. Okay. If there was the high head plus snorting, shallow breathing, tail swishing, you know, like other other things, mm -hmm. then I would think about it more. Okay. So you want me to do this? But I don't make rules off of one movement they make. Okay, if I not... if I did that, I wouldn't like get anywhere with a horse because there's like it's seldom that every everything comes together. And then I want you to have slower movements. Okay. Very good. Now, I think one of the biggest things that you're gonna have to remember and you guys are gonna have to remind her of sometimes, you tend to be a little quick even when he's being perfect. You weren't there at all, but the, just as a general rule, you're a little bit quick with your movements for me. You're not too hard. I actually would like you to be a little firmer when you do things, okay. but don't get there quickly. That's one of the biggest secrets to success with horses. Get there slowly so they know what's coming and then be as firm as necessary, okay? okay? Um, what I'm anticipating is there's gonna be a day where he spooks or get watchy or does something that you don't like. You have to maintain that smoothness through it. As opposed to, oh my God. Yes, because yeah. you'll, you'll add, you'll feel him if you are feeling that way. Okay. And you have to make a decision in that moment and say, would I be better off just getting off and not reinforcing that anxiety in him by me not feeling comfortable? Or can I just take a breath and recover and continue on and that's totally like your decision either way i guess it depends on what what's spooking like exactly if it's exactly a cow running out where i'm probably getting off you know Ex what i mean exactly <laughs> so i want you feeling totally comfortable that you could do one or the other you could get off you still have to be smooth on how you get control over him but then you got to make a choice i'm either going to stay on and we're going to keep going through this or i'm going to hop off if you get off he's on hot lava the game has to be, I don't want her to get off of me anymore. Right, right. And so it, you can't just get off him and lead him back or something like that. It's got to be like, okay, you're on hot lava, like right away. You're off. Okay, now we're going to do some hindquarter quarter yield, some, back him up, do something. Yeah. Then put your halter back on, do some more work or whatever. Um, or if you're feeling comfortable, then, then carry, carry on. Okay. But that will not hurt. You will have less risk of hurting anything by making that choice and getting off versus cowgirling up and, and faking it and, and pretending like you're more comfortable than you are. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do it neck rein and direct rein, both. Neck rein and then direct rein. Yes. Very good. And part of the reason I don't really want you to add leg if you're I can't help it. If you're fixing that as a steering issue. <laughs> yeah. Is part of this is when you get into trotting with this, I want you to be able to use that as a slow down mechanism. Okay. If he gets trotting faster than what your seat and your energy is telling him to trot. I want you to turn him sharp enough that you feel him right back in the turn. If you're adding a lot of leg, then he's going to be more ready to keep going there. That's going to be hard for me to do because everything's been with my legs for years. So, right? <laughs> in dressage, it's like, you know, legs. So, yeah. all right. And I, every horse I ride, if they've been at my house more than 30 days, I can ride them bridleless with my legs. So I use a ton of leg, as probably more than anybody. All right. But for this particular example, if I'm using the reins to teach them what I call ride and guide, which is steering and impulsion, mm -hmm. I'm not going to add leg in that because I want the reins to mean slow down in the turn. It's kind of the only time I would tell somebody not to use their legs. So he was getting a little high headed and braced at something. So I'm Perfect. just so doing you're redirecting him. Relax Love little, it. little relaxed rein. And this makes me so happy because you're, you're articulating what you, your idea is to him very well for the hindquarter yield, for the relaxed rein. 
Okay, good. Because you have to be fo fully comfortable doing that. Because those are your two recovery strategies. And when you're once you're feeling confident on him and he's maintaining speed and direction, you can go ride however you want to ride. The sky's, the sky's the limit. And if you ever run into trouble, if you go back to these strategies, he'll go, oh yeah, I'm not supposed to do that. Either relax or, oh, don't do that again, <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, and then we're all on the same page. Okay. You're doing a very good job of turning them loose with, with uh, loose rein there. When there's more speed involved is when I feel like I need to have contact though, right? Would you feel comfortable asking him for a couple steps to trot and then bending him down right away? Sure. So but loose... I can't use my legs, you said, right? Yep, you're just gonna you're gonna <laughs> go one hand on the reins and then when you're as soon as you're ready to bend him, that hand's gonna lift and slide so that you don't have to lean forward to get shorter on the rein. Without legs, I can't squeeze with my legs? No, you can ask him to trot okay. with your legs. And then bend him down. Very good. Do you feel how you had to shuffle the reins a little bit there? Yes. To, to do that? Yes. So the most efficient route to getting short on the rein, if you were in a, like a real oh no situation where he was doing, you know, taking off on you or bucking or something, is going to be to get in the, the, learn the habit of lift, yeah, lift and slide. Okay. So I would encourage you, yeah, when you're ready to trot, put both reins in one hand, and then that hand's gonna lift up and you're gonna slide down with the other hand. I can't trot with one hand. Okay. I can't. <laughs> now lift and slide. Very good. And I'd like to see that just a little bit smoother. Okay, not so fast. Yep, there was a little bit of a pop on the end of that. And then hold a minute just a hair longer because his head was still up. And kind of pull and release on that inside rein until he leaves his head and neck on that circle. And then drop it down, pick it up again, drop it down. Yes, yes. So a couple steps there. Very good. And you could also even wait till his like head and neck go back down. You could look at any of those signs to say, okay, yeah, he got settled in that move. Mm -hmm. Like that time, you let him out of it, he stopped, he took a breath, his head was down. Like that was all the things you wanted out of it. The first time you let him out, but he hadn't really gotten there mentally yet. So okay. just keep that in mind. Okay. It's all right. Right. You're doing fantastic. Perfect. You want to bring it to your hip and then lower your hand down to your knee. Hip, knee. And you're just, you're asking the horse to hold that bend on their own. That's where the magic is. If you're just holding him there, like a lot of people, I coach them to do this and they say, well, I was doing relaxed rain and it didn't work. <laughs> but mm -hmm. if I watch the video on it, they were holding the horse there and which means the horse's body got there, but their mind maybe didn't choose to stay there. And that's what we're after. Do you want to try canter? Hell no. <laughs> sure I will. So I want you to trot him and just get comfortable trotting and you're just going to whisper to him with your outside leg. No voice cue or anything, okay. and he'll just step into a nice soft lope. No kissing, no nothing. I don't think you need, I didn't need to. As soon as I moved my leg to cue what lead I wanted, he stepped into All it. All right, let's see what happens. That was my foot too, I couldn't help that. And then once you're cantering, you can canter as long or short as you want before On you decide to rain. bend him. Huh? On a loose rein. Whatever you prefer. <laughs> This is simple, this is fun. I can, you can do, do this. It. All right. <laughs> Good, she's been watching the videos. <laughs> I keep telling myself, okay, so I'm not liking this. So turn the other way. Oh, I was gonna just do this. You could do that too. I would turn him the opposite way where he's leaning though next time. Okay. Same move, but just. The opposite way, yep. so this way. And just check, make sure you're still breathing and relaxed. Because sometimes if we change our composure, then they, you know, then they yeah. shift. So you got to kind of not think about the canter. His canter is very nice. I know. I've ridden it. <laughs> I've also ridden the buck. But you got to you got to kind of not add that part at the end. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Relax your legs. You're gripping with your legs slightly. Good. Now sit and bend him down. I'm falling off. <laughs> bend him down. Very good. 
So you did squeeze slightly with your legs. So I could see where he could think about bucking if he was more impulsive than he is now and you were holding him together. Like, remember how he cantered online the first day? Yeah. If he was thinking about that kind of canter and you were holding him and your legs were on, that's going to lead to a buck. Okay. So I would say your prerequisites for cantering are that you feel confident enough that you can relax your legs and not feel the need to squeeze. The contact is fine. You're totally fine with the contact as long as you're not controlling his speed with the contact. Okay. So if you feel like his impulsion is where it is today, you got green lights. Okay. You can walk, truck, can or whatever you like with contact, green lights. Where contact is not okay, in my book, is if you're like, I have to ride with contact right now because if I don't, he's going to trot or canter when I didn't say. That's when you need to think, maybe I should have warmed him up stronger. Maybe we should just stay at a walk and do relaxed rain. Maybe there's no canter today until I feel that. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Because that, that's the, that is the only really prerequisite is that their steering is reasonably where you want them to go and that you're not managing speed through your reins. If, once you have those two pieces, contact green lights. Should we try to the right? That's this the is simple. That's the, this this is, is fun. fun. I can do I, this. I felt no difference on his right lead canner and left lead canner. If I did, or if I was any worried about it, like I'm a pretty conservative instructor. <laughs> um, See, I didn't ask for trot. So, yep. I'm... so you just bend him, but just, you got to maintain your relaxation as you go. Right. So that's the, that's kind of that other prerequisite is that you're not getting tight while you're doing this. Good boy. Welcome. So just go ahead and get him into a trot and have his flexion to the inside. He's got a big trot. It's hard to sit, doesn't isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is kind of a bouncy <laughs> trot. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Relaxed legs are very nice. I love it. And bend him down. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> and I mean, that kind of canter, you can't help but just be like, I would love to keep canter in this All horse. All day That's a great long. canter. All day That was fantastic, long. Kathleen. Yay. Oh, so good. That was awesome. So good. And I, I think we've gotten a lot of clarity today from this session of like, okay, you're competent with the hindquarter quarter yield, the relaxed rein, you totally can do that. I want you to challenge yourself continuing on the loose rein at a to walk and slower. trot. Be slower for sure. <laughs> um, but practicing that getting you getting a little more comfortable on that loose rein. But we also know that hit when he's settled and he's not emotional, his impulsion is great. Steering, he's a little bit used to being micromanaged. Yeah. That could be a little bit better. But you felt that and you didn't like that either. No. You wanted to tell him to go the other way right. too. So that's on point. So we're gonna go through our checklist. Okay. Number one, you feel relaxed, you're breathing, smiling, you're happy. I can do this. You don't this have is tension. Because <laughs> if you if you have tension, if you don't feel right about it, don't don't force yourself to do it. Okay. Number two, if his impulsion and his steering and he feels relaxed. If those two things are there, you're ready for canner. Okay. Awesome. I'm great so job, Kathleen. Happy. That was so great. So happy. We're so happy. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.